Loretta Graciano Brunin, PhD, is an American author, speaker, and creator of the Inner Mammal Institute, where she helps people build new neural pathways and teach how to manage the brain chemicals that make us feel good. She has published different books as Habits of a Happy Brain, I Mammal, The Science of Positivity, and Tame Your Anxiety, which is one of my favorites. As professor of management at California State University and a mom, Loretta was not convinced by prevailing theories of human motivation. While researching alternatives, she uncovered the brain chemistry we share with animals. She learned that each happy chemical evolved to motivate a specific survival behavior, not to make us feel good all the time for no reason. Then, everything made sense, and she began creating resources to spread this knowledge. Loretta's work has helped thousands of people make peace with the animal inside, including myself. Dr. Brunin's work has been translated into seven languages, and she has been quoted in Forbes, NPR, The Wall Street Journal, Fox, Time, NBC, Psychology Today, Cosmopolitan, Real, Simple, and Psychologist. And here today, in 2021, I have the honor to meet the person who has inspired my journey to create We Mammals. Loretta, thank you for accepting my invitation. Thanks so much for doing this. I'm excited to talk to you. <laughs> thank you. Well, Loretta, it's been a wonderful journey since I started reading you. I would say it has been a serendipity. When I started my research on what was supposed to be field work for a university project and then ended up in my entrepreneurship, I was looking for, when I, when I did that, I was looking for two things. The first one, why are there so many people depressed? And number two, why is that writing has worked for me as an antidepressant? Anti and after many other readings and interviews, I found you. So can you tell us your definition of a stress, anxiety, and depression, and how do they affect our body? So simple answer in the animal world, when you see a threat to meeting your survival needs, you, your body releases the chemical cortisol. Cortisol is designed to get your attention. So if a gazelle is eating grass and it smells a lion, it would rather keep eating. But cortisol, oh, you better pay attention to something that's more immediate, more threatening, more important. And that's why people find it hard to focus on other things once their cortisol turns on, because it's designed to do that, to command your attention. But of course, in the modern world, we're not being chased by lions. So we want to know, so why does it turn on so often? So the simple answer is neurons connect whenever these chemicals flow. So anything that triggered my cortisol in my past turned on my bad feeling, and now it turns on more easily today whenever I see anything similar. And that's why it turns on without conscious intent. It turns on, you don't even know, like, why am I upset? Mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily remember the earlier experience that built the pathway that turns it on. And so, um, that's why our verbal brain, so we have two brains, the human brain that uses language and can think about the future that's unique to us, and then the animal limbic system that controls our chemicals, that controls our lower brain that is common to all mammals, and that turns on our happy chemicals and unhappy chemicals for reasons that our verbal brain doesn't understand. So we all go around not knowing the reason for our happy and unhappy um, flow. And if you tell me, oh, it's because of that experience 20 years ago that built the pathway, most people think, oh, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't get upset because of that, or I wouldn't get happy because of that. So that's why it's so hard to understand ourselves. But um, after spending many years, one, one fascinating thing that you might do, interview people about their early childhood and then you understand what they're worried about today or what they love today. And you say, wow, they're just repeating. Mm -hmm. And you see that it's just a pathway. And once you know it's just a pathway, you know it's not a lion chasing you. You know that you're not broken. You know that the world is not broken. And that leads you to the next step, which is not so easy. 
which is that you could build a new pathway. Mm -hmm. And that's the solution to everything, <laughs> is to build a new pathway. And once you understand that, then you could put your effort into building the new pathway instead of getting upset about the same thing over and over. So that happens is the same with anxiety and depression. One it's like you are high or like you feel fear and the other one is like, like you feel sad. Yes, exactly. And I always try to bring it back to an animal perspective. So a gazelle is smelling a lion and that would be anxiety, you want to run from the lion. So sad would be, let's say it's a, um, a drought and the gazelle can't find enough food. And it looks for food and doesn't find it. It looks and looks and looks. So that would be more a natural explanation. So I'm looking, I'm feeling disappointed, I'm not getting what I'm looking for, because dopamine is the good feeling of I'm meeting my needs, my actions are having success, I'm getting what I'm looking for. Mm. And the confidence about meeting what I, meeting my needs, getting what I'm looking for, makes it easier to turn on more dopamine. When you have negative expectations, then you think, well, I may look for green grass, but I'm not going to find any. And every time I look for green grass, I don't find any, so I'm not even going to look. Mm -hmm. So that's more like the animal brain's view of depression. And then the animal brain's view of anxiety if a gazelle could think about the future, would be, oh, if I run away from this lion, there's just going to be another lion. <laughs> Everywhere I look, there's more lions. <laughs> yeah. So that when you plug the animal brain into the human brain, you know, it generalizes, it projects into the future, and that's what you get. That's a very good explanation, a very easy one. Yeah, thank you.